pioneer. I'm an explorer. I'm a human, and I'm coming. I'm animated. My heart's big. I like to eat. I like to fight. I like to f I like to have children. I got a life force. It's got hot cum going through it fast. I like to eat children. I'm a throwback. I'm setting fires everywhere. I'm a human, and I'm coming. What is up, Bombad fam? How are you doing tonight? Here we are at two years of podcasting YouTube. We're YouTubers now, essentially. We, it is what it is. But guys, here we are, two years of doing this. We've gone from this channel to our lovely friends at Beyond the Blast Door, still friends. We just decide, you know, we, you know, sometimes the birds have to fly on their own. Sometimes you have to leave the nest and it happens. It's fine. But guys, two years and also a hundredth episode uh, tonight. That's this is the hundredth episode. I, welcome. Welcome. I'm doing this on my own. I'm not going to bring Scotty in. He's waiting in the wings. I see he is. He is. He is angry. Oh, oh he's he's hopping mad. He's hopping mad. No, you know what? I'm going to bring him in because I can't do this to my boo on our on our 100th episode and on our, our second anniversary. So here we go. I love you, boo. Hey, boo. What's up? What's two up? Years. Two years together. And dude, we've got two new shows on top of it. Two years. And it feels two new shows. so good. Dude, mm. Hyper Focus launched this week. How did that go? Tell me about that. Well... We hyper focused on a few things. No, if you haven't checked it out, um, it, it's very minimalist right now. That's what I'm saying because you know a lot of it is because I haven't had the time nor the energy to get anything else done for it. But sure. <laughs> also, minimalism is just I'm just going to go with it's minimalist. It's minimalist it's right art now. Form. We had, it's an art. It's form. an art form. It is. Yeah. Yes. And, art and form. I, had, I had lovely the lovely Nick Milky. Oh, uh, our good friend, our good friend, um, God, what a good came person. on. We talked about the MCU. We talked about um, fatherhood. Uh -huh. um, I brought we, that up we, because I had well, to, we got you. We got you thoroughly stupid. terrified. We got you thoroughly terrified uh, for all the time you're not gonna have. So <laughs> get ready for that. You know, I'm not ready for that. I'm Just not get ready those for tubes that. tied. Just get those no. tubes. No, oh, you'll be good, man. You'll be good, Jerry. Did you see last night? I started a show last night. Yes. Too. What? Did. What did you think of that? It was fantastic. I, I, my father, my mother and father, I think, are watching right now. My dad might actually be asleep because they are leaving. Uh, my folks uh, are in. They're leaving out for Arkansas in the morning. Cool. And I tell you, um, uh, uh, my, me and my my uh, sixty year old father. Uh, yeah. He really enjoyed watching you. <laughs> That game Race was so and crash and yell. It's oh just fun God. watching. It's fun watching you react to the game. Which yeah. that's the whole point of the streaming. You you stream. You so. want to watch people play games, but people come here, Scotty. They come to the Bombay cast for me and you. They come to here for yeah. our reactions. And yeah. I, I think I think you had that was a crown blast. jewel Doesn't in blast. our in in our our Bombad crown. Yes, Bombad gaming. So two years old, Jerry. Jerry, I'll never forget the first conversation. By the way. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, Jerry and I have little to no notes. I just got back from a dinner. My 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 twenty. We literally birthday, haven't spoken this week, hardly. Yes, my, yes. My twenty sixth birthday is tomorrow. So let's. Should we get Paul to sing a song? Should we get? Paul let's to let sing Paul sing. Yeah, y'all tell right, him. Happy, happy birthday in the chat. Yes, my I'm twenty six tomorrow. Uh, golden birthday happened. Oh, thanks, thanks Pete. Pete. Um, but we're gonna get. We're gonna let Paul uh take us away. With a song, maybe? And maybe, you know what? Mr. G's going to go first. Mr. T, what should I do for my 26th birthday? Mother, there is no other like mother. So treat her right. Mother, I always love her. My 
mother. So treat her right. Treat her right. So I should treat my mother right. I can't. Okay. I I was expecting this more of the doing. song just because again, we, uh, if we if we literally if we don't hand out mixtapes at celebration next year, people <laughs> I think are going to be so pissed at us. <laughs> we'll hand them is CDs, that something? Fun drives. Mixtapes. Not much, Nick. Not, Not much. much Nick. I was giving no, you a compliment, but you know, you know how it goes. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. And uh, um, we should just do a classic. And you know. This stemmed from, I don't even know where this came from, to be honest with you, but Paul uh, Paul sent me this for my birthday, but he sent it to, he's been sending it to me the, every day. He wakes up, his happy birthday, and he sends me this video, and I don't really know why. I can't figure this one out. This is your wake-up call. Time to reach. Go for it all. Fold your spurs inside of me, and I know what I can be. Limit is the sky. <laughs> this is this is all the show is anymore this is all the show is anymore. i'm just thankful that willie made the sign for us I mean, I it's just, been a great birthday Will, week that's that's been it's impressive i think my parents are probably thoroughly impressed in there right now um honestly <laughs> in the next room hi guys yes um, um and i, I will no, say no, too this is the I, best birthday week it has been a great birthday week we got awesome. this on Monday, we got this on Wednesday. We've got this today. I'm just thankful for the fact that people want to come and hang out with us. I'm just so lucky. And Jerry, two years of doing very this is lucky. insane. Two years, and I never forget our first recorded episode was with the one and only Bill Sheehy, and we talked about Star Wars creators. Do you remember that? Yes, mm -hmm. I do. Real quick before we do any more reminiscing, I just want to shout yeah. out Black Squadron Podcast is here. Wow. Uh, hey. Welcome. I don't know if it's Todd or BP or one of the other crew, but welcome. I don't know if you guys have showed up for the, the show ever before, but welcome. I'm glad and you're welcome home. Welcome to the Bombad fam, guys. I, it's it's welcome amazing. Home. Uh, welcome home. Welcome I will home. say, too, I don't want anyone to forget these came in. I'm sending all oh, your, your yeah, cards out. Boy. Sending in all your cards out this, uh, this next that. week. Coming up when I've got nothing to do, and um, I'm going to be reaching out to several of you in the chat for your addresses, if that's okay. So you I know can make why my sure lighting? I get these Sorry, people. You know why my lighting looks weird? Why? Alexa, turn off master bedroom light. <laughs> Whoa, looks that, sick. If that was not a cool, I didn't do that for the reveal, but that was kind of neat. I just yeah. now realized. Oh, that was nice. I left I left my lights on. <laughs> and you know what? I want to say one too. It's BP. Thank you so much for being BP! here. BP! Really Thank you it. so Seriously. much, BP. Thank you. Um, What? Look at Jackson. Jackson. You boys look 10 years younger. What's your secret? Jackson. Jackson. <laughs> mainline midichlorians. It is mainlining midichlorians. Yes, yes. They take the they take the uh, the foreskins of, of Jedi Padawans and they <laughs> turn it into a serum <laughs> and we inject it into our skin. Is that what Alex Jones, Space Alex Jones taught you? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. What they do is they take the, the fluoride in the water and they, they turn the frogs gay. The and, then they eat, and then they have those frogs. <laughs> then they take those frogs and they, and they rub, them, rub them all over your face. <laughs> it's insane. Oh, Rah! it's incredible. Sorry, look, you're right. Troy's right. Jedi Jerry in the house. Oh, look at this. Jedi, Matt, my dude, yeah, baby. Hey, oh. what's up, guys? So, real quick, Jerry, today's episode comes down to a couple of things, and anyone in the chat can participate in this as well. Um, oh, look, shout out to oh, 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 oops, <laughs> sorry, mom and dad, <laughs> <laughs> boss, that's baby. And boom, boom, boom. to answer your question, BP. Yes, he does. And don't yep. feel bad. That was does kind of for the joke. Love you, mom and dad. It's yes. fine. It'll be okay. Oh, that's great. They're so, leaving tomorrow. Uh, get you. this. Get this. Yeah. We're talking about 100 things we love about Star Wars. I'll pull it up so y'all can see that. Um, And the chat can participate. Reagan's um, here. Oh, Reagan's always here. So the chat can also participate in this. Um, I'll show y'all the thumb one more time. Anniversary episode. 100 things we love about Star Wars. And we each chose 50. And... uh. We can just kind of start going off on them. We don't have to really explain them. Some of them are going to be kind of jokes. Some of them are kind of serious. Yeah. But uh, 
Uh, what, what, I don't know what, how what many jokes said. I actually have. I don't think really? I know how many jokes I actually have. I've got a couple. Um, I, I, um, I will say, though, I literally made my list the hour before this show. Yeah. Because I've been going and going and going. Oh, I, know. I don't know how. I don't know when you if you've been working on yours or, it, or what. Around lunchtime. And then I went back and edited a good bit. So that's good. So you got it. You got a rough draft. I, okay. I, I got something. Um, but this is pure unadulterated ADHD thought process. What we'll right do, here. Jerry? So yeah. Oh, yeah. What we'll do is we'll, we'll, st- I'll say one. Jerry will say one. We'll, we'll, we'll actually, I'll say one. We'll talk about it. Jerry says we'll talk about it. We're going to try to keep each conversation about two minutes. We, and if there's something to really talk about, then we won't talk May about it. May the odds be ever in your favor. Um, yes. But it's things we love about Star Wars. Now, this could literally be anything. If you want to throw in some of yours in the chat, if you want to throw in some comments about ours, by all means. Uh, Absolutely. So, we will. We want to hear yours. You yes, guys are we the do. reason we're here. Throw them in. Heck throw yeah. them in. Please. And, um, you know, or one thing, too, care. do us a favor tonight. I really, this is not, I'm not joking when I say this. I think it's the right thing to do. After this, if you have any sort of cable television, once Bombad ends, I'm pretty sure Conan's last episode will be airing. Oh. Maybe within the hour on 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 TV, what, he has gonna have streaming? his HBO Max show. Okay, so. okay. Well, what streaming He's, services he is it on where you can watch it? Because I honestly forgot that this was happening. I, I was gonna talk to you about this because I, I love Conan too. Oh no, like it's so crazy. And let's just for a second talk about Conan. Um, I would not okay. be doing this, and I'm not kidding when I say this. If it was not for Conan, I'm not. I'm not joking at all. Like. The idea of broadcasting, the idea of being just funny on camera, uh, completely came from him when I was watching him whenever I was 14 years old in high school. And and I can honestly say he changed my life. But the good thing about Conan is he's not leaving. He's just reinventing himself again, which he does best, y'all. He's the best at that. And well, it's like I, the second time, correct? Yes. Like he went, yeah. He went from uh, uh, he went from NBC, CBS. Which yes. Was he on? He he was originally on. His own show, the Letterman. She was on the Letterman show, the Late Show, and then he right, got right, right, right. he got the Tonight Show, and then he got axed only after eight months of hosting it because Jay Leno wanted the job back. Then he went to TBS, and then he reformatted his show again. Don't argue with Jay years Leno. Ago, yeah, he he formatted his uh his show two years uh two years ago to do like much more intimate interviews, and then now he's going to be moving on to doing his own stuff. And let's be honest here, Coden's best stuff is his remotes, dude. His remotes are incredible. Oh, well, dude, goes, I mean, what were you going to say? Just, he, well, no, no, just this whole, he, he, go ahead, go ahead. Talk about your, talk about his remotes. Like the man, the man is a comedic genius and he just, yes. he is just, he can work a crowd. Um, He's the he, best. He, uh, uh, Conan and Stephen Colbert are like, yeah, I, I love the way they work a crowd. That's yes. that. I love, I love their crowd work, but go, go on, I, go well, off. I mean, go off. What I'm going to say is the fact that Conan, you know, was around in the early nineties. Like he, I wrote this on a post too. You may have seen it. Um, and Troy's right. That that honestly, Clueless Gamer and Troy Jaro are the two inspirations for Bomb Badge streaming. They just are. Because Clueless Gamer is so much fun because Kona doesn't play video games, right? And when he did yeah. that little bit on his show, it would just be him figuring out a game while playing it. And he has a right. great guest to do that with. So he's just, he's a pioneer in, in a lot of different ways. And I'm just so, I feel lucky to have had for example, my dad grew up with Carson and Letterman, but now I have my own guy and he's leaving too. And there's something to say about that, right? I mean, he, yeah. I mean, he's the generations. Very much, oh yeah. Kind of and he's very much in our sense of humor, Jerry. Like he, he would probably watch this. Oh, yeah. or he, he would definitely get it. It would make sense to someone like him. what we're saying is Conan. We're, we're available, <laughs> man. If you want us to work on your show, we're pretty funny. We'll do a hold on, hold on, podcast. hold on. We we're getting a weird message from Jay Leno. I don't know what that was. I think he heard us talking about how he he wanted to come back to the. He you can't argue with Jay Leno. He's oh, oh damn it! He's coming in again. I don't know no. why he. I don't know why he keeps doing that. That's, oh, it's unfortunate. It's so weird. But um, you know, Conan also wrote for The Simpsons too, and we love The Simpsons here. We got some fans yeah. as well. So I uh, well, it, I, I have to say, just Team Coco in general, and they like. Oh, have you watched? Best. So I don't think you've watched yet. No, not yet. You told me to watch um, it, though. Uh, there is a sh- the the latest show. I get. I don't know if they've they've got another show, and I, I, I think, think this got it. saved. I think okay. this got saved. It is a big cliffhanger ending of the second season. No spoilers, but um, the uh, people of Earth. Okay, it is it is by Team Coco. 
It is that signature brand of humor. It's mm -hmm. brilliant. It is basically mm -hmm. high concept in that it's it's a group of people who are UFO abductees. Oh, okay. But you also follow you follow both. You follow the aliens up in their spaceship. Okay. And it's almost like the office. It's like office yeah. space up there. And like they're so mundane and everything, but they're also like, like, well, we're here to take over the earth and stuff. But it's it's very much like an office Brilliant. structure. Sure, and the people sure. down are like trying to like one of them is trying to prove that um, that he wasn't abducted, that they're just experience. And then like ends up finding out, oh, no, we were all. A it's just it's it's a it's a bunch of it's really fun. It's actually yeah. very heartwarming in places. Check out People of Earth and call for if it. I think Heck it yeah. got saved for a third season, but just get, but tweet about how much you love it because it's it's so it got so okay. It went so under the radar. It's so good, but it's by Team yeah. Coco. It's Conan, Conan and his team. That, yeah, I don't know how much he had to do with it, but uh, check brilliant. that out. But he just he has his he has his fingers in all these different honey pots. He does, and, and he's going to stay that way, which is good because you know if you think about it, the old the old late show kind of tradition would be once you signed off from TV, like Carson only did two guest appearances after he signed off in 1991 only two two right he did letterman show and i think that was it i think he did it twice and that was it he died in 2005 um letterman had his show on netflix for a little bit yeah and then conan thankfully is going to just reinvent himself so hbo max here he comes so i'm Man. not worried about missing him it's just weird to think that one chunk of my life now, and I, and I guess we're at the age, Jerry, is kind of oh gone. yeah, like that's the cable late night show with Conan O'Brien's gone. It's weird. It's it's weird. Well, it, real quick, uh, people are like, we got uh, uh, Alex here. Bringing oh, what up, a great! Bit. Alex and Nick have brought up two of my favorite bits. Yes, Matt. Every time Paul Rudd goes on Conan's show, he shows that scene from Mac and Me. Uh -huh. By the way, uh, Mystery Science Theater three thousand on Netflix, the new one. You told me rift that. on that rift on <laughs> Mac and me hysterical. It's the best one ever. Go watch it right now. That's but, awesome. But just every time he goes on there and he says, I'm going to show a clip of my new movie. And it's always that scene for Mac and me. Of the Ant -Man. Kid. The, it was like, I'm going to show a clip. Yeah, Ant man. <laughs> um, and this is the, the, I didn't know anyone else who remembered this. The Chuck Norris lever. Yes. I and my dad right now. My dad used to, when he was a younger man, people used to say, you look like Chuck Norris. And he always, back when the, in the era, when I was in high school or right out of high school, the Chuck Norris joke was it was peak. Sure. My father, so my father's a big Chuck Norris guy, okay? Yeah. The Chuck Norris lever where he just, what, it was like behind him and he would pull it and it would show yep. a random scene from yep. Walker, Walker, Texas, Texas Ranger, Ranger <laughs> of him roundhouse kicking a random person. I believe there was one time where he would roundhouse kicked like an old woman. And like out of context, it makes no it's sense. It's ridiculous. Literally no <laughs> sense. But it's like, I love that kind of stuff. Oh, um, dude. There was also I, there was also one. Do you remember he he did the like we're changing the uh, the terrorism, uh, we're changing the terrorism uh, 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 color coding of yes. uh, uh, alert terror alert yes. to uh, which Nicolas Cage movie is the worst? And they said the worst one was Wicker Man, and it, they uh -huh. show, would show a scene. It's like so when you see this scene, you know it's really bad. And it's when they're putting the wicker basket on his head with the bees. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, oh, the bees. bees. No. You go just imagine <laughs> Nicolas Cage, the cheesiest Nick Cage. Oh, oh. it's brilliant. Conan, this is, Conan's always had the best bits. Right here. Yes. Triumph the insult comment dog. I mean, literally. Still going it, hard. They they went to the um the attack of the clones. For, maybe we'll watch at the end of this show. I don't know. Because that was an incredible, well, well, incredible the, segment. The comic who does Triumph the insult comic dog. I believe he has oh, a Robert show Schmeichel. on Fox. He has Robert a new show Schmeigel. on Fox, right? Mm -hmm. He's a writer. Like, he wrote it, for Conan. It's, right. It's puppets yeah. and stuff. Like yeah. it's, I watched it. Interesting. They had a lot of Mandalorian sketches oh, in the really? first episode. Go what? watch it. It's kind of, it's interesting. Go oh, watch it. Um, I, because they had a, I think that instead of a baby Yoda, they had a baby Fauci. <laughs> and incredible. that was, yeah, go, go <laughs> check it wild. out. It's interesting. Oh, it's interesting. Oh it's, off, it's weird and bizarre and off the wall. And if you watch this show, you'll love it. So, well, anyway, look, we can I go on and on about Conan. We could, we should probably we could. Get so tonight, maybe watch it, maybe DVR it, maybe find it on YouTube after. So, just respect the man that that kind of put us in our com you know, like our comedic places. Honestly, it he kind of shaped who we are. In all a these, way. all of these, all of these people have an effect on on yes. the way you do con the way you want oh, to yeah. make people laugh and stuff. Yeah, and what you see when you're younger, and so I completely um, agree. Yeah. But Absolutely. anyway. Anyway, Jerry, let's get to the conversation. Anyone that wants to let's throw in bears, let's talk about it. Uh, do you want me to go first? So we're going to go. By one, all means. We're going to do Birthday one. Birthday boy gonna, first. 
Yeah, yeah. So, hey boy. So, I'll do one. Jerry does one, and we'll talk about pretty much each one of them. So, mine up first one. This is in no particular order. No, yes. I that no. I don't boop. I don't know if you saw, <laughs> but I dressed up as Conan for a high school uh, dance party once. Like I, that I'm was, a big Conan. Th- guy. Honestly, you were you were the spitting image. Frankly, uh, it's I didn't awesome. realize until you did that. You had the swoop and everything. Uh, I did it. No, it's great. Let's go look at that tweet or it's on Instagram. But um. Number one, for me, this is in no particular order. This is literally just stream of consciousness. My first one I wrote down that came to mind was Doug Chain's designs. Something about those designs, something I love about Star Wars. He shaped, to me, everything we're seeing now. Prequel trilogy and the Mandalorian, that's all his hands. And, you know, Ralph is great, too. Ralph kind of shaped the OT in the sequel trilogy, really. but. I'm telling you, Doug Chang, I know Eric, John, and Wes, they met him. He said he was a great guy, and maybe one day Jerry will meet him too. But Doug Chang's designs, hey, man. That's my that's number today. one, baby. What about that's you, today. Jerry? Uh, my number one is just just because, you know, honestly, I again, so I made my list right after I was uh, listening to the the uh, Twitter space okay. with Pete, uh, that, that Pete and uh, uh, Tatooine Sons put, uh, put mm-hmm. on. Um, I don't know if you check, don't check that out. The bad, the bad batch pregame. If you haven't yes. checked that out, check We've it been out. On it. It's fun. Yes. Oh, it's fun. I was actually on it today just for a split second, but, uh, nice. um, Western vibes, Western vibes, the Western nice. vibes of star Wars. That's kind because of gone it, now, you know, well they, well, they were talking about that today. How that last episode of bad batch, it was a oh. full on, down to the music and everything. Jackson, I think, uh, in in that space, brought up the music. And I mean, yeah. yes, it is it is like the it's like the good, the bad, and the ugly. Oh, it's great. And I mean, it was almost like it was. It almost took me out because it was so spaghetti western. But sure. I love that, like that whole western vibe. You know, we've had that ever since A New Hope. You know, when they yeah. go into the the rough bar to meet Han Solo and he blows it's a guy perfect. away in the bar. You know, it's sick. Um, we don't yeah. see that anymore, too, in pop culture. And, like, I think it's important to address that here. You know, we he, pop culture shapes and, and changes. For some reason, the past 10 years, it was, like, zombies. And and, and yeah. uh, it's just, I don't know. But, like. I, Quentin Tarantino Western. has a love for the Western, obviously. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I definitely, mean, like, definitely. He, he's put a lot of love into the Western genre in the last Heck several yeah. years. But, um, yeah, I don't know. You, you don't really. Well, there is a new Western actually coming out on Netflix this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just dropped a trailer for it today. I forget the name oh. of it. I think it's called "The Harder They Fall" or something. Okay. Looks great. It also it, it looks a little uh, Django Unchained, honestly. Sick. It looks a little Django Unchained. We'll so. check it out. Um, my number two, Jerry. My number two is interesting. It's two people that I'm very thankful for that kind of helped me love Star Wars in a new era of Star Wars. That is Ryan Johnson and J.J. Abrams. I am very. I love them. The fact that they single handedly. Made stall not single handedly. It's a, a horrible phrase. The fact that they <laughs> had the they guided a large vision. team. Yes, the the fact that they they guided a a huge vision and and kind of catered everything about the sequel trilogy. Just them two and and kind of JJ coming in to save the day, no less. Like let's be real. I don't care how you feel about the movie. That dude had to do a very difficult task, start and end something. That's not easy for anyone. George didn't even right. do it, except for the prequels. But I mean, right, that's like right. about it. And and those movies have interesting starts and interesting ends too. But they were already well, kind then, of pretty I determined. Mean, we we saw last week with him, like that that Revenge of the Sith era. Oh, George and, and them, how Woo! tired they were from the complaints and everything. That was the baby. That was like the the birth of the internet right there too. Yeah. So they were getting it full force. Heck yeah! Um, for the first time. But you just see, like, yeah. It, they weren't able to because they, I don't know. Just, I, I don't know. They, yeah. Go on with your point. No, no, no. no, I, no. I, I was just going to say, I'm very thankful for the fact that we got a sequel trilogy and that it was done well. And that maybe some of y'all don't agree with how it was done. Just the fact that they could do it and you kind of have to do it. And well, I'm thankful that Ryan Johnson and JJ were the ones that did it. You know, what star Wars, great. what's what star Wars movie is perfect. Yes, exactly. I, I will put that exactly. Up. I, I won't tell you that any of them are. In fact, I mm-hmm. I would almost say that the the sequel trilogy isn't perfect, but that mm-hmm. it that makes it uniquely Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Frankly, I agree. That, I mean, you know, and we'll get in. I'll get into some things other down my list. Sure. So, um, um, thank you for being here, Connor, as always, and of course, Rez and Josh, Mister Berkeley. He taught me in middle school. Great guy. He was in the welcome. chat last night for welcome, Bombad sir. Gaming. So, Jerry, what's your number two? My number two, 
Um, so you can see I started out very like uh, 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 superficial. We'll get deeper as we go. But yeah. my number two is Boba Fett rearmored. Oh, dude, God, I didn't even put that. That's genius. God, that was just, a moment, that, man. That was a moment. Specifically, oh. Boba Fett repainted armor. Specifically that. I mean, specifically oh. Tim back in the suit. Uh, Tim as Boba. But so just uh, having him uh, just come back. Like, the moment he steps off that ramp. And I rewatched oh. them recently. Uh, so right before good. our Tim episode. Actually, last week. Bomb Bad yeah. Tim. Yeah. Um, I watched those episodes of The Mandalorian again to get like kind of pumped up for that kind of stuff sure. for Tim Mor Timira Morrison. The, when he steps off of that ramp, he so looks so good. He looks so good. I want that. I want that rearmored as a black series. I want oh, that dude. black series oh, we're yesterday. That. I want that, oh. but I'm still waiting for Crate Luke. Look at two. this one. So Boba's new theme. Well, just a oh yeah, that too. Both parts of the whole thing is just yeah, it's sick. It and honestly, I still contend that it it plays on that little bit of what we get in Boba Boba's theme in the Clone Wars. It could be. It has. I don't know if it, but it has that feel. It's the same kind of instrumentation. I feel where it's like that that like you know very western things like that. Brilliant. Jay, that's a good that's a good one. Um, my you. next one is the B1 battle droid. And I just love uh, the way they design. If uh, I could have anything, mm. dude, if I could have anything 3D printed, like a full standing, it would be a B1 battle yeah. droid. Their design is just so next See, level. Take the dangle weed off and try to yes, it yes, and put cool. the dangle weed back on. Dangle yes. Weed. Yes, I need to put the dangle weed on. Roger, Roger. I mean, like, there's something to that droid design that as a kid, I was like, I gravitated towards it. I love the way it looked. And I love the part right. where when they're running in the hallway and they explode and they like fly forward like that. I used to reenact that like running into my couch as a kid. Dude, it's just something, oh, I just like brilliant. Awesome. I'd be like, ah, and I'd, like sling myself into the couch. Like the B1 incredible. droid. <laughs> that surprised Eric. That surprised the heck out of Eric right there. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, Jerry. Jerry, what's your other one? What's your what's your third one, bud? My number three, and again, I know, I know, we're supposed to stay at two minutes, so here we go, here we go. No, no we're, we're uh, keeping it going. We're well, good. you you'll see, you'll see. I had a theme for a little while here. Seismic charge. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> all we can say about this is—is is that one of yours? No, 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 no. Do do the noise. <laughs> well, first it's. <laughs> You know, and I, I don't understand the people who said, well, why didn't it destroy the planet in the Mandalorian? Oh, come on. It did, they were, those were the asteroids. Atmosphere. Yeah. Dummies. Those were <laughs> asteroids. That's amazing. Oh, Shut your asteroids. And I imagine Get energy, about energy <laughs> travels farther because there's the vacuum of space and it just keeps going. Whereas, you watched it on a movie screen, guys. This was yeah. probably on your television or on your phone. It's fine. <laughs> it's okay. It looked cool. He used it again. He the did. fact that he used it again, badass. Oh, oh that's are good. you kidding that's me? Good. That we was never good. thought we would get that. We got that oh. and rearmored Boba. Same episode. That's true. Damn, I like Jerry. Both of those. I, I, this I, is I, good. I just, I really like. I'm, I'm on some Boba tonight. I'm oh, I get it. Yeah, Boopenheim says yes. Trust me, pal. You're not that guy. Oh, it's not that great. guy. Oh, thank you, Josh. I appreciate it, man. I'm glad you could be here to hang out with us. Thank too. you it's so brilliant. much, man. Thank you. Um, Jerry, hey, by the way, my... guys, real quick, real quick, real quick, yeah. go like, go more of you, go like the video, please, and and share, please, get more people in. Oh yeah, here. let's get yeah. this conversation. Let's share this conversation. Go, uh, we go love ahead. all of you. We love all of Heck, you. Yeah. But go on, birthday so, boy. Um, <laughs> this next one's actually kind of a heavy hitter. We could talk about this for a second. Um, Emperor's throne room scene and Return of the Jedi. <laughs> Why is that one oh. so? That one still speaks to me. Maybe it's the father son thing, but like. That's the one moment in that movie that I think is what makes it my favorite original trilogy movie. That's something a new hope in Empire kind of lack. And I'm being yeah. serious. You know what I no, mean? No, it, it's the most but, emotional duel, honestly. It's brutal. It's amazing. It's the most emotional. I would argue so more real. emotional than Anakin and Obi-Wan in Revenge Oh, yeah. Of I would say so. 
it's that that's the one that feels the most like it's the it's the battle for the soul of the galaxy. Yes, and then that all the fates was the battle of Anakin. This is the battle for right. Anakin again. I mean, it's just a repeating. Right. It's the reflection of it. I mean, Dave has a great right. like moment talking about that on the uh, on the gallery. Remember, he talks about everything in Star Wars can be traced back to the duel of the fates. So I, I completely agree, and and it's, that's it's on lease. It's on lease. Oh, it's brilliant. But um, that that moment is amazing. The music's amazing. The operatic score of that moment, the the full choir singing. It sounds like a forties movie. Well, it's. Incredible. I mean, I love I love the moment where Luke's hiding and yeah. uh, Vader's looking for him, and he he feels and he sister. goes, "Ah, oh, sister." So you have it. That moment where Luke loses it. Just the, oh, it's great. Oh, that moment makes it still brings tears to my eyes. Oh yeah, it still does. It's great. Anyway, Jerry, what's your number four, bud? My number four. My number four um, is <laughs> – so there are a few funny – Star Wars inside baseball jokes. So the very inside baseball changed. jokes. <laughs> this is – well, and this is – I mean, it goes all over the place from here. Sure. Because I was like, I got to fill 50. Um, <laughs> Star Wars inside baseball jokes. So the jokes that my parents right now won't get – Dangle but weed. all of us would think are hysterical. The dangle weed, dangle weed joke yeah. for corn's sakes. Yeah. What about is, what about uh that's wow. Steven's we're making fun of Steven Spielberg and the awkwardness of Steven Spielberg and George Lucas, how old man they are in that moment where they're looking at the battle droid. The best line, the best line I almost can quote it. I hope Eric's listening. Um so this is the new Star Wars replaced by the old Star Wars being the new Stormtrooper. <laughs> when he walks up to the when he walks up to the battle droid. <laughs> the um, new stormtrooper. Hold on. Another... Hi Ben. Hi George. How's it going? It's going all right. So that is what we're talking about. It's just next that level. We're talking about. You gotta you gotta get it. Like, you know, I was talking to Brandon more nerdy about this when he came on the podcast. I said, when you're that level of nerd you have your own secret language with other people. Like I could walk up to Brandon and look at him and go, I can look at him and go, oh, there's a Rickmeister. And no one else would get like, no one would no get one. that around me. God, so or, good. Or sorry, Rook, or this one. Locked out. Even I can't get past the security. Just the, just the, that is the man who, who, created this thing that that people almost worship and he's like uh, oh even i can't get past get the security, past the security. I, that's a joke one. from him but it's just yes it's th unreal. that man's personality i didn't think he something joke. about it oh well. <laughs> like this one too absolutely fantastic fantastic it was fantastic it's that great. was fantastic it's gonna be fantastic i mean it's gonna be yeah, absolutely fantastic and it's awesome you're enjoying it. absolutely awesome absolutely. it's so i'm so happy george is so happy it's just it's just fantastic oh it's, it's fantastic good. fantastic fantastic oh awesome it's, it's awesome it's this is the new one. This is the one that's going to be added to our 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 Star Wars secret language. Can I play this one real quick? I, I was going to say, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I have it on here. Go for it. I've been away for seven months. Now they're out filming the Book of Boba. Ooh, fight scenes, makeup. The one thing I've really missed is this hidden gem here in my hometown, Rotorua. Ah, the Polynesian Spa. Come on, New Zealand, try something new. Oh, there are no words. Can, can I say I love that he just ends it on, there are no words. Dude. You think he could go somewhere? What's up? There are Not no much. Words. Just, just Django Fett in a Polynesian spa. Can you, like... All of us at that day that 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 exploded on the internet, all of us were like, "I want to be in a spa with Django Fett." Exactly. That sounds incredible. It's sounds that incredible. secret language, it, man. It, oh man, it's the oh. best. I love it. Not just, I mean, in little parts of the movies, but especially this stuff, the people surrounding it and the personalities that are that are uh, like in this are incredible. Oh there man, there are no words. There are no words. That man. Whew. All right. All right. Well, anyway, <laughs> God, it's brilliant. That was a good, that was, 
Jerry, that was one of the best ones. And Jerry, can I give you my next one? Yes, please. Someone I'm super thankful for. So the reason why I love Star Wars is this man right here. I'm at best. All right, man. Stay bomb bad. Peace. Oh, dude. What? What a sweetheart. Stay bomb bad. What a that, G. And that that man. So again, for the uninitiated, like my family, uh, the, the man who played Jar Jar Binks, way too much hate. Way too much hate. Such a sweetheart. Such yep. a sweetheart. Um, just that, that, that he went through so much. Mm. is is a crime it's a crime unreal. that, that he got unreal. put up with so much that he is so and that he is still so positive to this day heck yeah i mean respect him i mean you gotta com- respect that completely agree completely agree um jay what's your number five bud my number five is quotes oh okay what's, um, what's and that from from the movies or anything um well uh, a surprise to be sure but a welcome one <laughs> um to uh even um I'm Omega, you know, I mean, like just like ah, anything, uh-huh, you can quote, uh-huh. which that was just, I mean, that, that one was lame. Um, that one was lame. Uh, but, uh, you, you know, you can, you can pick up that you can pick up any part yeah. of the star Wars galaxy. If you, if you are a fan of it and someone says a line, I mean, you are immediately like right there. And we love to use the really obscure ones in normal life yep. and stuff. And I always talk about, I'll always remember my friend Michael Chafin and his quote that he always quotes, I see them. Wait, Leia. Yeah. He just likes the whininess so of Luke good. right there. Return and for some reason, Jedi. that's stuck in his head. Like, all of us have such a random quote. We do. Katie's and is, so, uh, Kay's is um, the uh, Master Sifatias. She'll quote that one all the time. It always makes me laugh. And the, uh, the one I quote to her is, my lord, is that legal she'll she'll be like i have to i have to do that I have to make this turn here i'm like my lord is that legal always makes me laugh oh, that's a good well, one she, I care. she's got to answer she's got to answer yeah <laughs> she's got to answer okay. i will make it legal, legal. or something right legal. <laughs> i Jerry, will make it legal that's brilliant oh man Thank if you. you want to share your quotes throw them in there whatever you use on the day throw them in um, guys throw them in jerry my number six number six Thanks, Rick. <laughs> is, thank What's you, Rick. your number six, man? Ludwig's final score for the Mandalorian mm. season two, the finale. Whenever Luke's oh. in, the, in the elevator, oh. I cry literally every time. When it's the uh, dun, 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 dun. It's like he does the Mando theme. Dun, 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 dun. Zoom, close the door. I just literally, you watched, we watched that night. We were crying. Remember? Yeah. We no, it. dude. Yeah. We were both crying. I was like, we were Damn it. Yeah, I know. Me. Guys, I know like Scotty's the one who's cried more on camera, but I like, I am very like, I mean, I watched in game with my parents earlier yeah. today, this morning. Oh, and right. I mean, me and my mother were on the couch. <laughs> the entire last hour of that movie is happy oh, cry, cool. sad cry, oh, happy oh, cry, sad yeah. cry, happy oh, cry, yeah. sad. The whole darn time. I mean, come on. Telling you. Um, that finale, anyway. though, of Mando season two is it might be the most next level. And I'm not kidding. Like You're that, not kidding. It's it literally uh, is. Oh, my God. Troy's is great. Una, unta, ad olo. <laughs> Do you know that's from? That's a una, unta, solo. That's that's, yeah, yeah. that's Greedo. Greedo. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it's the uba, uba. Oh, look at Sita Oedo. What I really need is a joy that understands the binary language of moisture evaporators. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah, no, it really is. And it will come brilliant. back up. I'm just going to go ahead and give spoilers. It will come ah, back nice, up. Nice, nice. So, Jay, what's your number six? My number six is Sabak. Oh, what? Just in general. That. Why? Just in general. Well, I just got actually. So, my family uh, went oh, to yeah. Disney World a couple weeks ago. I've got actually have my Ben Solo hero saber right oh. next to me. Oh, is um, that going to show up later? I well, it can. It's in. It's in. It's it's in the the case right now, and the blade Sick. is over there. But um, it's forgot about that. It's good, but also I I got a I got a Sabak deck, you know, and everything the legit Sabak deck and yeah. um. And realized that if I want to do an idiot's array, I have to have the Corellian Spike version, which is not the yeah. Galaxy's Edge version, but it's, it's neither here nor there. Um, but just the the fact that that game exists, oh yeah, and that more people know about it, it now. It, like that's you can play it 
solo is just like you know it wasn't something that was in my periphery when i was a younger kid oh yeah Star Wars. but when you get older you read the books you i mean and it, it comes in more and more and especially in the new canon um just the fact that it exists and that it exists in the real world and you can play it and we'll get into wow. that that real that stuff existing in the real world sure. later on that but, was good uh, though. Just, just that Kind of like Star I can't, Wars poker. I mean, it's, it's I can't, pretty awesome. I can't show you the deck. It's in the it's in the other room on the kitchen Dang table. It. Um, Dang it! Dang so, it! Well, we play that celebration. Maybe we'll learn we to play all, it, and you and I will. Uh, Alden Diaz. I don't know if you saw the other day. Alden Diaz of uh, Octu Radio said oh, we what? need to get a high stakes game going at Celebration oh. for like collectibles and pins and stuff. That's pretty badass. We could try it. I'm like, oh, I would be. It's someone's hotel room. We're just like, oh. and we've got like. Tori, Tori, uh, uh, you know, uh, mandatorian? Uh, to mandatorian for the mandatorian, uh -huh. like ma probably, you know, if she, if she brings plenty of, uh, 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 calamari flan, we can just use that <laughs> as chips <laughs> and stuff, you know? Oh, that's great. There's some other good, uh, lines in here that I see right now. Uh, um, eyes up all of them. That's a good one from solo. Just, um, I mean, all that on solo is just uh, fantastic. Han, it's Han. <laughs> Han. It's Han. It's Han. Show us the deck. Hand. Oh, yeah, you can't do that yet. Uh, I don't know. Fly casual. That's a great line. Oh, I love my that. God. It's brilliant. Got a lot uh, of oh, good my... stuff in the chat, guys. Oh, see, look, we got we to gotta try it. Michael, you and I, we'll play it. It's going to be badass. But um, So, Jerry, that was your number what? That was your I number six? I want to Spike. I want to say I happen to have an idiot's array. Anyway, number six. What's your number seven, Scotty? You're going to love this. Literally, I wrote Brilliant. this because there's something to it. But Rick McCallum's presence, it's just like, I i don't know if it's because I see myself in him, but I'm like automatically gravitated towards Rick McCallum. Like it's yeah. something about him. And like literally I have that, let me get it full screen. I have that rare print that like only print I've ever seen of Rick McCallum and George holding a lightsaber. Oh, yeah, I, I love see the, that. That, oh. that like, it's like very Drew Struzan. Yes, it's like so a weird. Struzan poster. It's uh, by Matt Bush, and he's like an artist, but like, I have never seen, I've seen it digitally before at a low quality, but that print right there, there's something to that. And like, I don't know, Rick is just an incredible guy. Like, and, and you know what? Let me get a little clip pulled up just for a second. He may have changed that uh, that idea. I don't know. I don't know. Kitsy Alden not liking that, but oh well. Let's see. Okay, Let's... I like that. Yeah, fantastic. See, even Rick thinks it's fantastic. Yeah. Sorry, Jay. <sighs> no, no, no. That that is because that was what we were talking about. Is Rick's just Rick's energy? The it's way great. the man the way the man drinks out of the coffee cup while holding not holding the handle in the beginning, like. Is just yeah the way like the intensity is like it's just, he's great he's like he's so dribbling. opposite of George and you know I don't know if you know, I was Rick listening McCallum. dude literally I was um listening to George's on um, George's audiobook I was listening to the uh, Brian J Jones autobiography and Gary Kurtz apparently and George were very much the same they're both kind of timid both very calm but like if you look at George and Rick's you know I guess energy. George is very much the calm one. Rick's like, we're going to get it done. We're going to get it done. We're going to go do it. Very old Hollywood. You don't see that yeah. anymore, man. You just don't Not see really. that. Oh, uh, Rick Meister. There's the Rick Meister. Hey, there's the Rick Meister. Oh, <laughs> man. I love, I love Rick. Jerry, big Rick energy. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, anyway. no, you're good. You're good. Yeah, big oh. Rick energy for sure, man. Episode one documentary is one of my, it is. It really is. The beginning, brilliant. Seriously brilliant. Oh, I call him Georgie. Uh. <laughs> it's classic. It's classic. It is. So, Jerry, your number seven. My number seven is Canon Connections. Oh, I think I have that on mine. I'm pretty sure. Throughout, and I mean, I, 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 I've, I've again, I some of these things that. may, may double up or, sure, it, but, just but fun. just especially in what we've been getting with the bad batch it's felt like the most connected to everything oh, it's, it's brilliant some uh, people I can love, write it off i just love that yeah well people write it off as like it's such a small galaxy which i understand the argument but the same exact time if you have it to feel real yeah if you have characters that fit the story then put well, them in there i'm not even talking about characters i'm just talking about like like types of aliens type of sure. types of vehicles types of yeah. droids Types of just different things that have been like background things that have been in other films and media mm -hmm. coming up in different films and media. 
yeah. to me makes it feel real. It makes it feel like a real place I can go and visit. I agree. And, stuff. and, and a, a read. It's the reused feel that people loved about the original Star Wars that they were like, oh, sure. the don't have it. Yeah. It's that's part of it is that's that's what I'm talking about. The, not necessarily canon connections there, but just canon in like the random background well, stuff. That's the stuff. You know what I else? Love. My brain went to this too. You got to think about it. It makes everything you do in this fandom worth it. If you watch a certain right. show, then you read a book. You get a visual dictionary. Hell, you can even color a map. I don't care what you do, but it feels like you are contributing. It is more worth it. When there is a connection there, it feels really special. And, and in particular, like when a book references a video game or when a video game references something as crazy as, you know, a young adult story or when all of a sudden the High Republic thing is in a Snoke comic. It's like, it's brilliant. It's, I love that. I love yeah. that. And I, and I agree I with love that it too. I really do. But everyone, thank you for that. That's a, that's a really good one, Jerry. That's a thank really you. good one. That was a really what's good one. What's your... Well, what's your number eight, buddy? We're gonna. Well, I know we got to kind of power through, but <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's okay. Uh, my number. See, I have some silly ones in here. Um, mine is the way George says, "Well," he always goes, "Well." I told you just, lately that I love you. <laughs> literally, dude, it's such an aesthetic, and I've well, got Eric. Do, he goes, well, "Well, well." It's always like he doesn't want to say yes. There's a, there's the one interview he does with, with Master P, and he literally Master P asked him. He goes. So, so tell me, George, is 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 Yoda high all the time? And literally, George Ramos goes, well, only fifty. And he goes, he literally goes, wow. And I'm well, like, it's just, wow. Well. He's not. He's just like, how do I approach this? Like, what's a filler word that helps me think? And which, as a podcaster and as a as someone that does this, <laughs> you know how it is. You gotta have a word that like helps you develop the next step. Right. You don't know where to go with that. You're like, oh. it's it's the Michael Scott formula of sometimes I don't know where I'm going. I yes. start off. I just hope yes. I find it by the end. It literally oh, happens God. to more of us than we would like to admit. You, all you podcasters, oh, yeah. YouTubers, admit it. Admit oh. it. It's so good. But no, Pete. To answer your question, it's fifty. I do fifty. Jerry does fifty. 50 each. So. We're both we're we're so almost still at long. fourteen. We like fourteen. <laughs> so Jerry, you're uh, you're eight. What's in, kids? <laughs> you're eight. Number eight, found family. Oh, and being, that's I, good. I just and we get that we get the concept. We can move on honestly. We can, and I I mention it a little later, in more of a real world kind of way, I guess. Yeah. Just not to get too much into it, but right now I'm just talking about the found family uh, aesthetic in Star Wars. Sure. Um, about these characters who aren't related by blood, but end up becoming closer. Let's talk about it. I want to talk about this just for a second. Okay. Okay. When we all were going through the COVID-19 pandemic last year, and it's, you know, it's highest peak. Essentially, we started the beyond the blast doors network with everyone involved. And that was for about a year, our found family. And we still had people that hang out and join us. I mean, Holla Chronicles is, was a part of it. Uh, Pete himself was a part Pete? of it. I know we've got everyone else that watches and hang out the show. I mean, People, you got to realize that is found family in real life. It's manifesting Star Wars in real life. It's beautiful. It really is. That's a good one, Jerry. I right. love it, man. My number nine. It's very. It's a blanket statement. It's just, just completely straightforward. Uh, it's Thrawn. I think Thrawn is oh, going yeah. to be. I think you know if if you were to Daddy look at Thrawn, it, Thrawn. Oh Daddy. my god. You know we had Zaddy, Kylo, Zaddy we had, is the word. <laughs> we had Kylo Ren for for about five years really of just like great villain but i think i really think thrawn's the next like one that people will go oh well and oh and he's already been involved because, well but he's he's gonna the, the, people don't pay attention until it's in the live action exactly and, and we, he's coming we he's know showing up. we know for i mean it's pretty it's pretty sa a pretty safe bet you don't you don't drop a name like before. that you yeah. don't drop grand admiral thrawn in the Mandalorian, the most watched show on television. <laughs> I agree. Uh, you just don't. Yeah. They, oh, and they, that they did that. They, did, that they that dropped was, such a deep cut. That, oh. I'm not going to lie, for me personally, I, I'm a huge Thrawn fan for anyone that doesn't know. That was on the level of Luke reveal for me. Like, that really was. Like, I have a Thrawn doll right here. Like, the little wooden doll from Disney. Oh, that's like, adorable. I'm just yeah. kidding. I'm oh, wait. Look at this. <laughs> Dude, this. Ha oh, boys. you do that one? Yeah. Boys, that has to be a shirt. Like, y'all have to make that a shirt. Maul is checkers, checkers thrown his chest. Wow. Yeah, you, that's if you don't brilliant. want it, let us know. 
Yeah, but we'll take that's, it. That's a shirt. That's, that's a shirt badass. Right that's a really good analysis, too. Damn. Maul is 40. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Maul uh, is 40. Maul is like playing mousetrap, checkers, Monopoly, uh -huh. all of those. He's he's not playing 40. He's playing five board games at once. <laughs> oh, that is great. what Maul is doing. And Thrawn is just really, really he's Thrawn's into the RC chessboard. Yes, he is. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, a cad may returned. Uh, speaking of, you really starting right. to chiss me off. <laughs> All right, Jerry, your number nine. Number nine. My number nine. My, my phone keeps. I need to. I need to keep it up here. Um, my number nine is music. Oh, and we can go a, a blanket statement. That's pretty good. Well, it is, it's blanket because not just not just uh, John. Honestly. Yeah. We've yeah. had more than John for John uh, Powell several years now. Well, yeah. yeah, more than John Williams. We've had John Powell. John Williams, Kevin of course, Kiner. will always be the maestro. But oh, Kevin Kiner. I mean, oh, they yeah. were going off about him today on uh, uh, the Bad Batch pregame. But, uh -huh. I mean, are you kidding me? Amazing. They seriously, like, I want them to score one of the uh -huh. movies. I want Kevin. I want the Kiner brothers. I want them to score one of the films. They deserve um, it. Yeah. They they are to me the closest. I don't mean to be like all broy about like, oh bro, they're the closest was John. Give give Filoni and them the keys, blah. You know, I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying I would love <laughs> I feel like they are the closest to how John Williams does it, where he sure he'll put the familiar notes, but he's like he wants to do something new. He wants to create yes. something different. So I, yes. I love that about the kind pretty of pretty damn good, Jerry. All of it. That's pretty good. My uh, what's your what, number ten? Yeah, mine's number 10. Mine's consistency across all animated and live action stories. Uh, we already talked about that. Well, I love the consistency. Kind of, kind of but I mean, it's the same, it, it's the same idea it's from a different quality. angle. And it's I like, good. that's what I like. I don't want any of the media to pretend the other things don't exist. Exactly. And they don't. Uh, I'm it happened. That. Whether you like the prequels or the sequels or not, it all happened. Yep. Make it, 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 Make it it's count. all part of the story. It's, I'm fine with. We it. don't like. I don't like all the parts of real history. Yeah, but it happened. It has to happen. <laughs> That's probably a I bad agree. example, but I see what you're saying. Anyway, so your number ten, Jerry. My number ten is. <laughs> I was trying to find a way of stories that make you feel something. Stories that I like the way good. I like the way that uh, Star Wars makes me feel emotional sure. in a good way, it, and it's. I think it's a lot of us, you know, and and I'm not going to go too off about it, but just. I mean, especially after having a child, you you do become more sensitive to those stories. I was always kind of a sensitive guy, honestly. Sure, of course. Um, beneath this calm, sexy exterior beats the heart of a true, oh, you know. What a babe. Of a true, uh, you know, uh, uh, emp empathetic human being. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway. No, just that I – there's just – there's hardly a Star Wars story that doesn't make me feel anything. That's true. Even, even – the one that is, I think, the least loved, uh, uh, Resistance. Yep, Resistance. Is I bad. still feel something. I still yeah. feel something for Kaz when he watches Hosni and Prime get blown to smithereens. Exactly, I agree. When his friend joins the First Order, I feel yep. those things still. There's something there. I agree, dude. Yeah, hundred percent. It's in the DNA. It has to be for it to be Star Wars. Of course, I, of course. Another thing I love about Star Wars, Jerry. My number eleven is the fact that it introduced me to a new community in my life, and everyone here in this chat is that community. I mean, we yeah. when we started two years ago, we had came up with an idea that we wanted to create a community where people would be creative and have fun and be weird with us. And Jerry, here we are today. And it's been two years and we've got we've got a thriving empire. <laughs> but in all seriousness, in well, all seriousness, I it this if it was, was not for this this medium and if it was not for you and if it was not for celebration as well, we wouldn't have a community. And I'm and I'm thankful that I can literally everyone in the chat has maybe at some point talked to me in private. And that's, right. I almost said a curse word. That is freaking amazing. That's love. Okay. Mom and dad, earmuffs, earmuffs. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, jo I'm joking. It's Sorry. love though. It's something. It's, it's connection. It, it, it's that's my, it's that's beautiful. number 38. My list isn't, oh. my list, my list isn't, you know, it, it's not in order of importance. It is just, sure. but, but towards the end, I put a few more real things and, and, um, the fan community, just especially like our online throughout the last year, yeah, truly has. And I've been very open about my mental health over the last year. Going, through, sure, you know, all of us have been through. I always say, um, and I am, I am gonna, I am gonna use a word right here. I, you know what I always say, um, 
we're all it doesn't matter what shit you're dealing with it's still shit yes yes so it doesn't matter who's what, who has more no yes. one wants it on them no one wants no. it on them no and we've all been through it and each and everyone here in the chat just i mean people on twitter all that kind of stuff we, the community has has gained a new uh meaning for me sure and i think a lot of us so yeah yeah it there is, you go it is beautiful it is so now i don't have thing. to get my 38 there nope you know. nope you're good <laughs> so the next one number two 12. birds one stone like I said, I don't care if it you didn't like it. I don't care if you have some strong opinions on why you don't like it and why I'm wrong. But it's important to address that the sequel trilogy brought back Star Wars and made Sorry. it rel it made it relevant again. It did. It the the, the Force Awakens and Eric Kahneman and I talk about it constantly. Yeah. The hype before the Force Awakens was so freaking mad. It was like electric. I just never it was, forget. God, it was, it was good. Um, like the, I would say the Phantom Menace hype felt just because I was a little older at the time. Sure. But, but, I mean, it was fever pitch, like I'm right there you. with it. I remember going I mean, to Target and they had the the red, everywhere. you know, the red circles outside of Target were BB eights for like a month, and I'm like, that's so cool. We don't get that anymore. The world, the world, <sighs> yeah. Only in Phantom Menace, it's like at the beginning of a trilogy, the world's like, oh, it's back. Yes. And, and then then the normies, hey. as I, I haven't used normies in a while, they they kind of fizzle out and the rest of us are like, have you guys seen BB-8's new, yes. new circle pattern? You know, I don't even think I that's mean, a real thing. I think I just made that up. No, 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 no. It's not wrong. But but something else to be said as well is this right here, the night after, uh, the, the week after it came out, that was oh, the biggest thing in the known huge, universe. Oh, my huge. God. That, that is that same hype. I'm talking about that. That 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 is such a good energy. But uh, Jerry, what's your number? Um, what's your number? 11? I think I'm on eleven. You're on eleven, maybe. Did I miss one? We did. did I, I just did. Tw I'm on twelve. You you need to do twelve. I'll do eleven and twelve. Okay. Because I missed my eleven. I think I gave my thirty eight. Yes. Um, parental feelings. Okay. Which kind of goes with the stories that you feel something. I it's sure. Just I especially with Bad Batch, I get a lot of parental feelings from Bad Batch. Yeah. Um, and I tell you, whenever a uh, certain somebody said uh, aim for the kid last week, I know I was ready to I was ready Brutal. to stick someone's head straight up at their butt. Um, <laughs> I was going to reach through the TV and strangle a cartoon character. Um, <laughs> that's how mad I was. God, um, so awesome. but but number 12, the High Republic. Oh, you've liked your general. So, so see, I, it's not I, I'm not I'm yet. not full on. I'm not caught up, but I'm yeah. love what they're doing with yes it. yes so we'll leave it at that because i know you're not su super caught up buddy no no no. I, no I can say this much i enjoyed the one book i read so far looking forward to watching other people's reviews and you know un understanding of it better than apparently we've got a lot of good stuff coming but it, yes. i mean it also is what my my good friend i have a i have a bumper sticker on my car i can uh -huh. remember who made it i will shout them out but uh shout them out in the chat if you remember but i have a geode as my co-pilot my dad goes <laughs> No who's, way. Who's geode or something? And I'm like, I'm like, it's geode. <laughs> and uh, he is my friend. He is that's my friend. He's a, he's a sentient rock. Oh, that's so awesome. That's awesome. Um, can I show you my number? Uh, number thirteen. Go for it. Let's. Show, well, it's not. It's not going to involve. I was going to say, as long as the clothes stay on, as Go long as well. You know what? You know what? As long as it's tasteful nudity, I think we'll be fine. Obi Wan's oh. Phantom Menace lightsaber. There is something to this design that is just so incredible. Like I don't know what it is, but like I remember, I remember that was the design to have look back in that. the day. That's the one that I wanted whenever Phantom Menace came out. Qui Gon's I, was cool, yes, but this Obi Wan's was another story. Look at that; it's got like a little jewel in it and everything. Hold on, it's just dope. So that's, that's really my nice. that's my number. What was that? Um, that was my number thirteen, I think. Yeah. Yes. Thirteen. What's your number? Uh, thirteen. G. Lucky number thirteen for me is uh, the individuality of the clones. Oh, that's on mine too. That's a great thing. Okay, man. there we go. Another two birds, one stone, guys. I'm Heck glad. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad. Fourteen of you guys are at least sticking with thirteen now. Lucky thirteen on thirteen. <laughs> We're sticking. See, stick with us because we're gonna we're gonna have some overlap. But no, of course. The fact, and I love that Bad Batch really kind of is a sharp contrast. Oh, I agree. Um, 
because you have in attack of the clone from attack of the clones to revenge of the sith you don't notice much mm -mm. i think you notice a couple of the clones when they have their helmets off and revenge of the sith have different haircuts yes but to go into clone wars and see that the jedi that i mean even though they were going against their uh their ideals and sure everything, that they still couldn't help but treat these basically second class citizens created mm -hmm. for one bred specifically to die yes for a government yes that they have the compassion and decency to give them the freedom to choose who they want to be it's pretty that, sick. that that this isn't just like any other like no other franchise does clones like this mm -mm. It, they're usually it's a straight copy of the person where this is a dna yes it is a dna copy of that person different personality different soul for every single mm -hmm. one why we love dave and it's oh man it just that's the magic of star wars too it's never it takes the things that science fiction does and turns it on its ear sure of course and so, it makes it special I just, I absolutely, I, what, what do you have to say about it? Because it's on your list too. Well, no, the, clone, just like, the, the clone aspect comes down to the fact that that through watching that show, when you hear Clone Wars, I and mean, that's the brilliance of Dave and mostly all of the Star Wars, you know, anything, it's not what you think it's going to be. When you think Clone Wars, you think it's going to be nothing but wars. But this show had proven that it's not about the war. It's about the people that are in the war, the people that are forced to fight it. Like you said, they're bred to do this and they have to have this individuality and it's beautiful. And right. I, you know, and, and, and Michael brings up a good point, you know, the, I was going to say that sharp contrast. Orders. Yeah. It just, we're talking you can about. tell, you can tell now and back. They're Batch, not themselves not the anymore. It's not it's, the same. And it's, it's tragic. It's amazing. And honestly, and it's going to, this is going to come back up for me, but it makes me really hate Palpatine. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, that he did that to those are so many innocent people, truly, that he used as as just trash. That's garbage. It's just tools, which is that's his thing. It's, a, it's, it's an allegory to slave the slavery. It's just what. Oh, it, is. it truly, it's, truly. It's it's beautiful. It's very well oh. done. Um, my my number fourteen, my number fourteen. This one's a weird one. You haven't been yet. Uh, but when you go and when you experience it, Galaxy's Edge. Really, for for the time I was there, I went I went three times, ta three times, maybe twice. But the way they do everything, from the characters at the park knowing their canon, like literally, I I don't know, I might have told you this, Jerry, but when we went, they, my uh, family got to go before I ever got yes. to go. Oh, I loved dude. them. They That's oh, they so wanted awesome. me to be there so bad. Oh, like, I know they did. Of course. Well, I literally, still am, oh, I'm they. The the one of the guests, one, I'm sorry, one of the uh, employees at Disney uh, Galaxy. They literally asked me, "So where are you traveling from?" I said, "I'm I'm from more of a mid rim planet." And literally, their exact words so it goes like Cinderella or Naboo, like where you know. I was like, "What?" I'm like, "What?" They knew that, and like I'm telling you this much. It oh was, uh, gosh, it was I'm gonna be badass. like Dwight Schrute. I'm gonna be like yes. Dwight Schrute questioning uh, the Benjamin Franklin. Yes, that's <laughs> like, dude. I'm telling you. <laughs> You were gonna I love invented it. the bifocal. Sorry. <laughs> so good, though. I'm telling you this much. Galaxy's Edge is when you can go there. Oh, Jesus Christ. <sighs> Hold it real slow. I'm like, move it slow. Don't move. Let I me mean, get full screen. Sorry. I want to see it full screen. Let me get my get mouse. Full screen. I am going to talk about Ben in a little bit. But uh, what a cool go. design. It's so it's sequel awesome. trilogy. Well, it's and so I love unique. that he, he also designed it after his mother's. I told my mother yes. that, and she loved that. Yes. Um, you know, Brilliant. of course. Um, so that was my number uh 14. You're number 14, G. My number 14 is morality tales, which oh, kind of goes into the making good. you feel something. I mean, that's just sure. that's what these truly are. And that's all honestly, all the all that needs to be said is it sure. just I, I love that George created this as morality tales. They are sure. you are supposed to feel something, you're supposed to learn a lesson from these yeah. things. And, you know, and, uh, and, it's and, not just supposed to be uh, people kicking ass and nope. chopping off limbs. Sorry, nope. uh, doom, dumb dick, uh, yeah. uh, Mister, Mister. Sorry, mom and dad, but that 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 uh, jerk. Uh, yes, my gosh. Mm. I'm anyway. telling you. Well, I, I'm telling you. Uh, it's it really is special. Um, okay, sorry, I, I blanked that for two seconds. My sorry, 15, sorry. I mean, no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Off, moral, off. moral, no, no, moral, morality stories in terms of like, means. you know. If you were to, you know, take any franchise, usually they lose the morality story at some point in it. But right. this one is really stuck Sorry. to it. 
I get this reference. I get this reference. So Punch and Judy was like that's like the the puppets that punch each other and oh, you know, timey stuff. But yes. they were it's it's a morality t- it, it's a little morality tale ish. I think yes. right. That's what you're trying to say, Boop. That they they were to teach kids yeah. how to not be a jerk, but also to yes. laugh at the person getting beat up. I don't even know. Yes. Um, anyway, real quick, Josh or Andy, just text me. No joke. Okay, just let me know. Um, also, uh, fifteen, fifteen. I might go off for a second on 15. I think it's one of the best things. And all us, the one thing I truly love about star Wars is the inclusion of science, but it's not, it's not in terms of legitimate science. It's in terms of biology. And I love midi chlorines. I really do. I think midi chlorines might be one of the greatest things in star Wars since the midi chlorines. I think they've had a comeback. Honestly, I'm telling you, I, I can talk about this forever, and I have. I think before, we should not be upset about them anymore. But I'm sorry, we shouldn't. There is a true biology of belief, and if you will certain things, literally, if you convince yourself, you wake up every morning saying, "I'm happy, life is good, I'm happy," even if it's not, you literally convince the cells in your body that you are happy and you are healthy, and that is truly metachlorians. They they shape and they form you. Your cells take you're you're made up of millions of organisms, tiny organisms in your body. You have no control over them. Who's in control? <laughs> you know I mean, literally, that is it's it's George. Divorce. I'm telling you, George, George Lucas is in control of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, y'all. Many I love you, Devin. It's okay. It's okay. Many chlorians are the best. Honestly, I, this is so bold of me. Many chlorians are better than the entire original trilogy. It's just. Many chlorians are just brilliant. They 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 are legitimately it's Star Wars and science at a perfect blend, but that's that's right. just me. I could talk about many chlorians no. for literally ever. Jerry, what's your number? What's You're your number? Alone. I just want to give a shout out real quick. This is my this is my neighbor Devin. If you guys remember back oh, what's when up, we Devin? did like the the uh and he he is he's joking. It's fine, guys. I've talked to he, Devin is it's okay. It's okay. He's not gonna beat anybody <laughs> up. Uh Devin's a cool guy. Uh but uh he's if you remember uh when i watched the phantom menace early on in our yes. youtube channel uh devin was the one who watched with me and so anyway i'm glad he i'm glad to see you here buddy uh but my uh let's see what number are we on scotty 15 ah, 15, Look, all my 15. Uh, a lot of people don't like <laughs> midichlorian still we, we, this is a show like guys our show's literally named after a reference to jar jar binks what did you expect um <laughs> number 15 scotty <laughs> okay if steve he, steve palpatine, steve palpatine come on man. steve palpatine oh, man. somehow steve palpatine returned <laughs> um number 15 and this is the only way i found to put this no one's ever really gone oh that's kind good. of kind of the idea that and the people kind of make fun of this in star wars but i kind of love it that <sighs> there are like people were like, well, how did Darth Maul survive getting cut in half? It's his literal hatred and the, uh-huh. the dark magic of that of that universe. He used dark yeah. magic and his actual hate to stay alive. It's so um, good. But but you, I mean, just the fact that no one, Many like, I mean, and they made it, it is a <laughs> thing. It's a joke in in some sure. ways. They sure. made fun of it in the in the Maggie in the the May the Fourth Maggie Simpson cartoon where like yes. beloved characters never die. Yeah. To say that to say, I don't think my boy Ben Solo is gone. Mm-mm. You can hate me. Um, well, I don't think uh, I. I don't think it cheapens anything. No, it doesn't. I don't think it cheapens anything for him to come back. And honestly, I would find it very interesting. Yes, it hasn't happened yet. Also, no. he disappeared like he was going to be a force ghost. And he didn't show up. What the hell? Heck, sorry. We'll see. He might have been we'll force projecting the whole and, time. Well, and I have more. I have more. Uh, I have more thoughts coming up, but I don't. Think, sure. I don't think that story's done. No, I don't think that story's done, and I don't I think like it, Jerry. Truly, for any character, that's just something intricate or intricately involved with Star Wars. Is yeah, no one is truly ever gone. That's beautiful. Thank you. You can. We can. <laughs> what's your What's your sixteen? <laughs> no, I like it. No, that was really good, Jerry. Not gonna lie. My next one, Mark Hamill's personality and if you've been to a celebration where he's at it's incredible mark hamill is a god oh, amongst men and you know he makes you feel so comfortable he's just a kind dude i've met him like he really is so chill his eyes had me hit his eyes are so deep blue 
They were hypnotizing me. I was like, you're beautiful. And the fact that Mark was a nerd and he got the role of Luke is just like, it's perfect. It's brilliant. But that's me. Mark Hamill is amazing. Mark Hamill is amazing. Jerry, what's your 16? No one's ever really gone. I say you, he dead. I'm just saying. Uh, did Palpatine coming back cheapen Darth Vader's? Let's just say. Anyway, I'm going to piss off the chat. Um, <laughs> number 16 for me is Mark. So yours, Mark. Oh, oh yeah. You talk yeah. about Mark Hamill. Um, no, I kind of did. Well, I mean, just, I mean, everything you said is just yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I it's mean, Mark best. Hamill is just, he is, he, he is our king. Truly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, my 16 is what the Jedi are truly supposed to be, which is oh. what I feel a little bit of the high Republic is, but there is a little bit of, there's a little bit of arrogance to the high Republic sure. Jedi, but, but they are very like that. It's like before, I think it's before the Jedi truly got like fat and arrogant and like before they were like Mace the, Windu, basically the police mm -hmm. of the Republic and stuff like the police force, of the Republic and a religious order. Not yep. a good, that's not a good it's not a good combination. Not, good <laughs> not a fan. But, uh, not a fan. But what That's the Jedi are truly supposed to be, and what we end up getting with, I I say with, uh, with Luke, with Ray, yeah. and yeah. all of the. So, um, I agree, Liam Neeson. Truly, I mean, I'm sorry, Obi Wan. Oh, I mean, Obi Wan. Obi Wan I mean, Obi -Wan gets to. Well, Obi Wan gets to it. Yes. Um, he he's he's just loyal and stuff, and he. Yes. I don't think he ever was like uh, not a true Jedi, but but his master Qui Gon was a hundred and ten percent what he we always say the you most, know, the most jedi most jedi, jedi to ever jedi. jedi yeah you do it baby yeah man i think he's that's a good I think one he's back to qui-gon so tell that's a good one um uh, my my number 17 what was it 17 behind the scenes documentaries they just they're just the best i i could literally watch i i could watch them I probably would watch them more than I could watch certain movies. Behind the scene documentaries are absolutely brilliant in Star Wars, and they're they're quintessential Star Wars. They really are. They're absolutely, just, they're amazing. One of the best ones too, if you haven't watched it, is the Rise of Skywalker documentary on the on the Blu-ray. That one's freaking phenomenal. Oh, freaking phenomenal. Um, but anyway, uh, behind the scenes documentaries, Jerry, what's your seventeen? Well, I, I actually have behind the scenes content down my list too. Nice. So we can skip that one. But just I mean, Star Wars behind the scenes content is always the best. Oh, it's so um, good. That's that's just it. So my 17 is just the bad batch. And I don't know if I mean the show or the actual crew. The crew, or both. yeah. Honestly, I'm loving the bad batch. I don't I I it, it's okay if it's not your cup of tea. I, I don't understand my it because I've made it so far. It's it's kind of becoming mine just because yeah. this, I and I talk about more of these aspects later. So maybe I can just knock them out right here and then mm -hmm. skip them to save time. But the slow burn nature of the right like the 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 Republic turned into the Empire like that. But the mm -hmm. slow burn of here's every step along the way, of, you know, like, OK, now we got the power. Now yep. we're going to slowly change things and God, stuff. Good. Um over time Ooh. so no one notices mm -hmm. um it's it's that whole thing how george was trying to show in the prequels he was trying to show and i get into this a little later too that you know fascism can rise in a democracy like democracy oh, yeah. can crumble overnight so you have to be vigilant you have to I be can. vigilant um that's, that's good, one Jerry. thing when people and again i get into it later but you know people say star wars isn't political george lucas You're begs wrong. to differ George Lucas Girl. begs to differ 110%. Uh, well, well, <laughs> well, well, well. Um, that was good, Jerry. Bad Batch has been my favorite Thank animated you. series so far in terms of where it's gone and where, where it Sorry. started. We have some Let's corporate start. training films that work to show behind the scenes stuff like thermal exhaust ports. Not our finest moment. <laughs> Steve, Steve, at it Steve, again. Steve will never, uh, I, I don't know. It, you have yet to disappoint, sir. So just uh, there, there you go. The, Look at Boob's comment. <laughs> Palpatine's phone was perfect, but it was completely legal. He made he it made legal. It legal. Legal. <laughs> legal. <laughs> uh, constant vigilance. Um, so my, uh, my next one is the fact that it's modern mythology now, 18, modern mythology. Star Wars has gotten to the point where it not only captured the pop culture, but it made you really think about huge storytelling tropes that have been around for thousands of years. Everything yeah. from, you know, literally like um, you can 
date everything back to like even the story of Jesus Christ. There's so many allegories now in Star Wars that makes you think thematically, makes you think on a deeper level in terms of storytelling. And well, and, and how, how do you compare it to your life, right? Mythology right. is that. How do you compare Star Wars to yourself and yourself in stories? It's it, it's I mean perfect, it's empathy. That's what it is. You could even you could even uh, I'll say I know I know you guys were giving me a hard time you know Raylo blah 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 yeah yes yes I am whatever yes um but Ben Solo is a very Christ like figure towards the well I mean just mm -hmm. you know giving his life for Ray and stuff mm -hmm. I mean uh, beautiful Vader Vader I mean yep. was literally born of the Force no father yes. um. It's great. It just, I mean, it's all throughout. It's all throughout. Yes. Oh, I hate Rick. I, I really do. This rat bastard. Get out of here, Rick. I'm just kidding. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Rick, you make me laugh. Even kind though of. Your name rhymes with a foul even though, part of the body. Though, oh, my goodness. Anyway. Hey, Rick, the orders are the orders are slowly going down. I don't know if we, we might have to. Rick's just a couple hours away in old Chicago land. I love well, that you're. I love that you won't hang he's out in with Chai Rick because Town. of COVID. I love that you, you're probably both vaccinated. You've both been around other people, but you're you're literally making up an excuse. I don't want to see him. It's I don't so want to. I don't. Amazing. Good I don't want to catch you stupid, Jerry. Just, I, just, just, I love you, Rick, but I don't want to catch. The, I don't want to catch that. That's that's. I contagious. just love. You're like. I'll, I'll hang like you hang out with Justin. You hang out with other Star Wars people. You're good, Richard. It comes, it's all good, oh, but Richard. I can take it. I'm just I'm just messing. I can take it. It's all good. This is all just, good natured fun. It's all good natured fun in here. I just love that you will not give Rick the time of day. It's the most incredible thing in the Rick's, world. What's funny is I was actually telling my parents <laughs> about my rivalry rivalry with Rick today sure. in the car when we were listening. <laughs> To the bad batch <laughs> thing i was literally telling them me and rick have like a, a wrestling thing but wrestling's real wrestling's real <laughs> so amazing yeah well it's probably because you're lame so <laughs> i didn't even mean to click on that i was trying to click off of rick's boop that is perfect <laughs> you ain't gonna catch COVID, but you'll catch these hands oh man that's good that's Fist good cuffs. my uh my uh 19 though rick Wait, wait, what did you, did you do your, did you do your 18? Uh, I don't, uh, no, Omega. 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 Hi, Omega. I'm Omega. I'm, I'm Omega. You guys, you guys know how much I love Omega. And it's, yeah. I know a lot of people, I get a little person, like when people like attack, when they talk about not like, it's perfectly <laughs> fine for you to not like a fictional character. Sure, it's fine. sure. The problem is in my brain, I have to say, I have to say, stop. You're okay because in my head, as a father, Stop. it's a little blonde girl sure, who sure. reminds me of my little blonde girl who is yes. younger but still very fiery, very you know like and anyway. But I just I, I, I I've gone on and on and on about how much I love Omega and how she's Jerry, the most realistic kid we've ever had. But for y'all that don't know, Jerry also loves Omega three vitamins like fish oil vitamins, so that's part of it too. I literally started taking them like day one bad batch. I just like I like, actually like down three bottles a week. Good um, God, Alex I Jones I, style. I think I'm starting to grow gills. <laughs> <laughs> Those are this fish oil, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay. My my 19, and this is a brief one. We we'll, we have episodes on this one. Star Wars celebration. I love it. It means so much to me. What's your number 19, Jerry? Sorry, I got to I got to I these Reagan. heartless these heartless Reagan. these heartless fiends in the chat. Why? She, Why you gotta be like Reagan, that? Reagan, don't make me pull out my video of Ella saying, "Yes, Reagan, don't make me do it. I'll do it." Do it, do it. Not do on it. here. Do not it. on here. Do it. I'm not do going it. to on here. I'll do, I'll do it on Twitter. I don't want to her. Yeah, anyway. Get her out of here. Just kidding, Reagan. We love you, kiddo. Which is you're, right. you're good. You cannot like you, you cannot like Omega. It's fine. Oh, you had a healthy child, huh? <laughs> That's good. All right, uh, Jerry. That's good you're for 19. you. That's for you're 19. My 19. You gotta give a, your 19. You know what? Mine was celebration. You weren't paying attention. Mine was celebration. And we didn't talk. Oh, about I love it celebration. It's great. It's great. It's in, we didn't talk about it because I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Keep going on. 19. So my 19 is Ray. Oh, I love Ray. I just thought of a couple of characters again that I'm I'm glad they exist for my my kids. Sure. And of if course. you want more on honestly, if you want more on that, go and listen to uh or go watch 
uh, the first episode of Hyperfocus with me and yes. uh, uh, Nick yes. because we're both girl dads. Yeah, we talked about all those things that people are like, oh, that's so girl power. Oh, that's so mm -hmm. ham fisted. How those moments made us cry. Yes. Um, my ex actually cried in the scene in in game whenever all the women like came up, you know, the A Force scene, um, because she had never seen that before. Just the, the the importance that these things have for women and girls in the future that are coming up in this is just amazing. Beautiful, it's beautiful. Really Reagan, is. yes, <laughs> I agree with Ray. Ray is one of the best characters that has come out of Star Wars in a very long time. Like. Like she's probably better. She's on for me personally. She's on the same level as a uh, prequel, prequel Ewan McGregor, like pre prequel Obi Wan. Like Ray, they are, they're beautiful. <laughs> me too. I'm just kidding. Um, uh, <laughs> my my number twenty, Jerry, is Frog Lady from The Mandalorian. <gasps> How did I not think um, of that? I, I love Frog Lady. Yeah. Literally, just think about. Think about who is the Sorry. voice of Frog Lady again? It was uh, not James Earl Taylor. It's uh, wait, is it the guy that does bad? Is it the guy that does Bad Batch? Is it uh, it did it, it was D Bradley Baker. Bradley, he, D Bradley Baker. He was Frog Lady, and like just think about that. Just think about that. That's Dude, literally all he's doing. Quick, I mean, not to, not to not to downplay D Bradley Baker. I want to say this. Do you remember when that episode aired and Peyton Reed was the director, Jerry? Right? And everyone's like, yeah. oh my God, the final see the episode, the final episode is gonna be terrible because the Peyton Reed did the frog lady episode. All of y'all are idiots. I knew that <laughs> wouldn't be bad. Y'all are all absolute morons. You're the biggest idiots in Star Wars fandom. But anyway, love you. um, but now I don't <laughs> hey, uh, fire merch. 20, 20 for you, Jerry. What's 20 for you? Uh, 20 for me is it, frankly, it, it goes right along with it. Din and Grogu. Ah, dude, what a relationship. God, I kind of had what? all these parental ones in a row here. Sure, right? sure. Omega makes me feel the parental feelings. Ray. Um, I feel parental feelings just for my daughter having a protagonist like Ray to look yes. up to, but also uh, Din and Grogu, just the, the, the parent child relationship that they have in yes. there. The reluctant parent, like there's the, the scene after he like talks with Ahsoka about him, finds out his name, and he it, like has him like th the proud dad moments he has when he oh, catches awesome. the. <sighs> I mean, it's it's so real. It. Oh, it's, it's so, so real. Good. Tank Farrick, and he's like, "Oh no, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. You, I'm just excited. It's just oh, yes. it's so adorable. I love it. I so love good. it." Um, the uh, next one for me, twenty one, is I love that Star Wars is set in the galaxy far, far away. Yet it's kind of futuristic. We've got bio, you know, mechanics in it. We've got Luke with the robotic hand. I, I love that. That's something I really love. Absolutely. I think it's, it's brilliant storytelling, obviously, with the hands being cut off. But it's also just really sick. Uh, Jerry, what's your 20, uh, 21? 21. My 21 is the, just the comics. The comics um, are good. Um, mainly the main line and like the new Darth, the new Darth Vader, like the ones that take place right after Empire. Yeah. Have been. And I'm not I'm not fully caught up, but I mean they have They're been great. just absolutely incredible. I have cried several times during the first volume of the of the trade paperback. Yeah, it's They're sick. So many, so many incredible moments. Anyway, They're amazing. Check it out if you have a chance. Just go buy one of those trade paperbacks. Just buy the first one for the the After Empire uh, series. You won't regret it. It's sick, dude. But what's um, your twenty two, buddy? My my or was it twenty one? What number are we on? Uh, we are on 20, I'm on 22. So my Me 22 too. and Eric made a good suggestion. Maybe we can pick this back up on a uh, next Thursday, dude. We'll stop at, we'll stop at 25, right? Okay. And then we can pick yeah. this. Are you, are you okay with doing that? You guys how chat. How's that sound? Well, one person just dropped out. I think we're, I th listen, I think that's honestly probably a good idea because we, yeah. we can go on and on. So we don't oh, rush we through this. No, no. Cause there's some things in here that I'd actually like to talk about. Uh, my 33 is one of the best things I've written. And I'll tell you, I'll say that maybe next week. I'm excited. I'm excited for you to hear that. And we, I'm excited to keep these a secret from each other, honestly. Yes. I like that. It's kind of sexy. Uh, anyway. Um, You're right, Connor. You are absolutely correct. I don't, I don't think you even heard what I said, Jerry. I just don't think. What did you say? Did you, you make you me? Uh... No, I said, I said, <laughs> everyone, everyone heard it, but, I, but he didn't. That's What'd the point say? of podcasting, people. Listen to your co-host. I said, I said, 
it's cool that we're keeping secrets is actually kind of sexy. And you just just kept reading comments. Well, because like that's, well, because that's that's not out of the ordinary for us. So anyway, <laughs> um, but Rick Rick really confused me. Or I I got distracted by number twenty three is Gro Grogu Force <laughs> Force Chucky Car dude to protect Din. Oh right. god, <laughs> this is you this leave is my awesome. dad alone. Look, this is great. Good idea. I can't handle you guys too much longer. <laughs> I think we're. I think everyone's like <sighs> twenty five. We'll end. We'll end on twenty five for both of us, and we'll Thank pick you, it back Devin. up Thursday. Even uh, though you, Richard, even though you hated on Devin, even though you hated on uh, uh, midichlorians, we will respect your uh, uh, your opinion. This is a good one, Richard. Richard, he sends me this joke every now and then. I, I can't. I cannot explain it on air. But there is an incredible joke behind this. Luke, did I ever tell okay. you about Ahsoka Tano? She, she was. I can't. Even, I can't even go into it, Richard. That's amazing. We um, might have to. There you go. Star Wars inside 20, baseball jokes. Let's do. Let's do twenty. I'm gonna do twenty two, and we'll end on twenty five together. Got you twenty two. Steve, real quick. Hold on. I got some secrets for you. Only the Sith knows them. That's very uh, sexy, Steve. That's very that's, sexy. No, Richard. I don't think anyone knows that one. But um, twenty two. Uh. The generational passing down of Star Wars, passing down Star Wars literally to your kids or your parents passing it to you. I remember watching with my dad, the prequels. I love the idea of this, that Star Wars has now become a generational thing. So cool. What do you think about Absolutely. that, Jerry, being a dad? How do you feel about that, being a dad? I mean, it is. and I mean, believe it or not, so my family... I don't think they quite knew I was going to go so deep into Star Wars. But they are the ones who did like they I mean, they were the ones who I were watching it around me. Right. Like, that's how I, I got it from like my cousin, Joey, um, sure. was the one who really got me into it. But my parents were always like my mom and dad both were like, you know, um, I think I said on uh, Hyper Focus how uh, my my parents actually took me to see Ghostbusters, too, when I was like, they were like three. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you know, my parents have always been like that. Uh, they don't pay attention that's to awesome. ratings. Who cares? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's the best kind of parents to have. Um, but anyway, it truly isn't. And I'm I'm not trying to force it. We talked about this on Hyperfocus too. We're not trying to force it on our kids, but it is something that I mean, it is generational, and it, it everyone can find something in it. If, if you are as deep into it, and you do a show every Thursday like us. Sure. Or you just you love the themes and you you just love that it exists. Or you love seeing it with your family. That's a big one right. too. It's just tradition it now. Could, for it some could just people. be yeah. It could just be a tradition you have, like on a holiday or something. Absolutely. Or Friday mornings with Mandalorian. That's been my favorite tradition so far in the past two years. I've loved that tradition. But um, okay. I don't know uh, what this is. <laughs> I love this though, Joey. Uh, Joey. I just imagine um, it being like that. Jerry, you're 22. I'm sorry, I got it real quick, Rick. Uh, not really. I don't know. Anyway, my my 22 is actually Skywalker: A Family at War by Kristen Baver. Oh, I'm not finished yet. Wow. I'm not finished Good. yet. But I honestly would recommend it to everyone, mm -hmm. whether whether you are a fan of the new canon or not. Yeah, I'm only to the Clone Wars right now in the book. It is. I don't know if any of the if there are any Christian folks in there. There's kind of this. Someone wrote a book called The Story. And it's essentially like a summary of the Bible, but like in a very uh, 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 what do you call it? Like in a very uh, uh, cinematic or or storytelling sure. kind of way. So yeah. it feels more like a novel. It's shorter. It feels more like a novel, but it's the whole story. This is very much, and it's it's Star Wars written like it is a uh, like a biography of the family. But it feels like the story for Star Wars. Yeah. It feels like it is. And oh, the insights. And they go into little things that happen in the Clone Wars. Big moments for Anakin in the Clone Wars are in there. They get into his yeah. drama. They get into. Oh, that's sick. I, I'm excited to get through the rest. But just. Yeah. Check, if you haven't picked that book up, you will not regret it. Seriously. It's so good. Look at. Uh, I think. Oh, the Bible, the Bible to Jesus fights the internet. <laughs> I'm about to click Eric's comp, but Troy's. Oh came yeah, up. yeah. Kristen Baver hosts. She hosts the Star the Wars show Star now. Wars show, uh, the, yeah. the, the, or the the this week in Star Wars. Yeah. Right. This week in Star yeah. Wars. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Good. Good stuff. I, I need to read the book. It's I heard it's amazing. Uh, my 23 is very simple. I'm excited to see Jerry's reaction. My 23 is Therm Scissor Punch. 
That's just oh! I, I don't know why I wrote that. It's the name. It's the look. He'll that, say a crawfish. I don't know. It's amazing. That is the epitome of Star it's Wars so aliens. Weird. That it's is the so epitome weird. of weird Star Wars characters. You've got this, and it, it goes Star right back to like it goes right back to Hammerhead. I know. To, um, uh, what is it? Uh, like yak face yak face all yeah, that kind of like, stuff it's like that it's, just, it's that old style of that but also just that they had girl. it and they're like that's what he's called little bat girl whatever they called her right that's just so amazing yeah therms is your punch there's something to that character uh jay what's your 20 that was just a magic moment in star wars whenever we figured out that that character existed yes everyone's favorite Disney. he has like Disney. literally probably a Adrian? half a second of screen time <laughs> Every- <laughs> i have that card I have that card. I, I have do. a therm scissor punch somewhere. It might it might have gotten lost in my move, but oh, oh it's man. good. Jerry, what's your 20 uh 23? My 23 is my love to hate Palpatine. Ah, uh, that's a good one. I love to hate Palpatine. All I, I, listen, and and Steve, no offense, man. No offense. <laughs> but what I've come to is that. Palpatine is a we've talked about how he's a great character. He's a great villain. Yeah, yeah. But it's almost simple. Like there, I I, I don't even I don't want to say if you like like hero worshiping him like a hero, I may I may be like, eh, you know, um, I think sure. you might be getting the wrong thing out of it, but I don't want to I don't want to yuck someone's yum. No. But at the same time, the just the fact like I mean, and I thought about it when I was watching I watched the first episode of Bad Batch before I came on tonight. Um the th- fact that he and thinking about the individuality of the clones and everything just like how truly narcissistic and absolutely depraved that man is yes and everything no love truly and i mean oh, he's yeah. got he's got funny lines and he's got like and he we love he's a cool bad guy you know it's like he's a great we, bad guy he's the greatest quotes he's ever the- i mean the robot chicken lines from him are are hysterical they're amazing but you know it's like uh you know smell like Literary bacon wrapped on burnt, like in wrapped around feet or something, you know. Yeah, yeah. But but the actual as a villain, mm-hmm. I mean, my love of hating him is the best. It is it is great. He's the it best is truly, villain. It is truly a oh I don't like you. Oh I don't yeah. like you. He knows you're how mean. To get your skin. You're cool, but you're mean. Mm, I want to just you know. Anyway, yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. That's good. That's really good, actually. The uh, what's the aluminum falcon? Yes, an aluminum what falcon. The hell's yes, the aluminum Devin. Falcon? Yes, Devin. Oh, it's good, and that's true, Richard. Tarkin's another one, kind of. You watch this, and you're like, yeah. you know, that it, it's there's something to that character that's very. Easy oh, to I hate. was like, I mean, my parents were watching the first episode of Bad Batch with me. They're right with me, and I'm like, that's the guy from A New Hope. They're like, oh yeah, and I'm like, yeah, he's mm-hmm. always been a jerk. Yeah, 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 <laughs> always. Oh, it's great. Uh, so my uh. My 24. This is an interesting one. This is a really good night, Connor. We're about to end, buddy, but we'll see you later, bud. Um, Different opinions of Star Wars, in particular, in it, in Star Wars, and different opinions in the fandom. So, in particular, TLJ does that the best, where you see three sides to a story. You see Luke's original side. You see Ben's side, yes. And then you see the real side of Star Wars, which is, I think, to me personally... That is probably one of my favorite things in all of Star Wars. The fact that we got to see that in TLJ. And then that's what divided the fandom, which is yeah. pretty cool too. Honestly. Uh, you, well, I mean, it's it it it's it it hurts sure, <laughs> a little. But it, it hurts. But I get what you're saying. That it's that not, it actually created that feeling. That's, and I will say this too. Now, I hate that it made a terrible faction of the fandom that we have to deal with their bullshit, but the fact that it yep. allowed People would have constructive criticism of Star Wars is great. The prequels, people just seem to get mad because it wasn't what they thought. But TLJ was a good movie that had really interesting plays with characters that we loved and grew to love. And I love the fact that literally in the movie, it's different opinions. And also in real life, it is different opinions as well. And I, yes. Richard also, <laughs> that's great. I love to hate TLJ. Some people it's enjoy okay. not liking the movie. As, and that's fine. As we- well, and as long as you're not going and being a jerk to other people about exactly. it, exactly, exactly, about you're liking good. it, that's yes. fine. Yes, yeah. But anyway, as, that's but vice versa. Uh, no, well, I mean, just to say on that, like, um, uh, it was literally that whole 
Ben's perspective, Luke's perspective, the real perspective. It was literally, right. it was, it was from a certain point of view incarnate. It if you great. don't like the movie, you have to admit that's literally what that is. That that's is, that is from a certain it. point of view, uh -huh. literally played out on film in Star Wars. We saw it manifest. Yes. It's good. Jerry, what is your 24? My 24, and sorry, Boop, and everyone in there. I'm going to make you feel some things. Um, order 66 from multiple angles. Beautiful. I kind of like that we're getting it from multiple angles. It's, it's, dude, it's like, it's like when you ask, I like about, seeing it. What's well, like I when like you ask someone info. about where were you when 9 11 happened? Like that question. It's there's like a that. million stories. There's yes, a million. It's stories. great. It's great. Yes. It's like I had a family member that was actually at the Trade Center that survived, or this, this is like you get to see a huge event in star Wars from so many different perspectives. Now it is traumatic. It is hard to watch sometimes, but it's still important to acknowledge that it did happen in star Wars, right? What a uh, star Wars, uh, any star Wars media that doesn't make you feel anything is, I mean, it's nothing. Oh, Trey, yeah. how's it going, buddy? Trey Mitchell. How's it so, going? How's it going? So elaborate on that though, real quick before we end this, Jerry, why, why is that something you love to see? Just, I mean, just like you said, there's a million stories, and I like in Revenge of the Sith, it's like it happens, and you're just like, okay, yeah, and, and then it gets fleshed out in Clone Wars a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. we see the end of it in Clone Wars, we see it in Bad Batch, yeah. Um, it the more sides we see from it, it, it explains a little bit more of the mystery. Not that there's not too much mystery anymore, but just to see it, to see other characters in the universe react to it, yes, um, is amazing. Thank you so much, Trey. Trey, thank you so much. A blank comment with money. That's so. Uh, thank you. Just, just, just thank you for tomorrow. the money. Thank it's like that money. is the that is the equivalent of us being human statues <laughs> and him just tossing money in our hat. So thank you, kind <laughs> sir. Um, Scotty, did you do your twenty five? I would say our twenty five at the same exact time. It might be the same. Let's try it. Ready? Oh, five. Oh, four. Okay. Three, two, one. Pod racing. Luke versus Ben on crate. <laughs> <laughs> the furthest. It was so Couldn't be closer. It be closer. Be closer. I don't know why you thought we're not a dyad. <laughs> we're not a dyad in the force. Why was it so far apart? <laughs> it literally couldn't be close. It couldn't it be farther. Like it couldn't be farther. <laughs> that scene, that scene you're talking about. <laughs> Rick. <laughs> oh, oh, man. That okay, I was so like, I was, you said that I was like, I don't know, man. Okay, here we go. <laughs> your scene is just like, it's so different because it's so much more slow and like a pod racing in 3D. Did you see what? But did you see that? Did you get what? to go see Phantom Menace in 3D? Oh, yeah, it was brilliant. Out? It was amazing. Oh, it was, it was so good. good. It was but, um, so good. Let's talk about pod racing real quick, then we'll end on you. Um, uh, <laughs> thanks, Michael. Nailed it. Nailed it. Uh, that scene, I've told this story before. There was a New Year's a couple years back uh, that I got. I got a little, a little. I think Richard was Richard might have been there. I got a little. I got a little uh, overdone, if you guess you could say. If I was a steak, you, you wouldn't want, you wouldn't want to Never eat mind. me. No, I was trash. So I'm watching. I, I'm like, put on a fan of menace, and then right, I put I on the pod race scene. I have the I have the the volume to a hundred, and I'm just slamming the table. That's this is the greatest. Thing stars ever done. The this is why I love coming to your house. I want to come dude. back. I want to come dude. back and and have you the drunkenly demand the, the pod race scene. It's I want to so have good. you drunkenly demand the pod race scene. Like put it on. Like I want to see it's you at like a bar. So good. Like, put it on. Yeah, put it on right scene. now. Put it's it on just right so now. well done. There's no music, <laughs> sound effects. It's just perfect. <laughs> oh, here you go. There's the connection. It's working. Oh, this is gonna happen Saturday. Luke should. Luke should. Oh, hey, and Luke even tried spinning. That's a good trick. That's true. <laughs> um, listen. So, all right. Your well, wait, one, wait, I'm sorry. No, My last one. Go into it. L Luke versus Ben on crate. Um, there is something about um that scene. That is almost like the thesis statement of Star Wars for me. Yes. I love Luke holding to his ideals, but still being a hero. He found a way to not give up his uh, his, his uh, uh, peaceful ways that he wanted okay. to, but he still was able to go and and hold him off 
distract Kyle, distract oh, Ben yeah. because he knew he was Obi Wan. He, he literally became Obi Wan. He stopped. He but let him even, escape. But it was like even it was even more because there's that moment. It's like if Obi Wan had a really powerful speech to tell Vader at that moment. Yeah. It was like if if, if Obi Wan gave him the "You were the chosen one" speech. Yeah. When he's letting them escape on the Falcon. It was good. You have Luke going, I failed you. I'm sorry. Yep. I made and, a mistake. And still You're the product of that mistake. God, I'm sorry. God. I failed you. Um, but I'm not gonna let you. I'm not gonna let you. He's like, well, for one thing, it's almost like you're he knows his anger is yes. what's guiding him right now. And he's like, I'm, I can't let you go in there and do this right now. I can't let you yep. do that. And so just that, but also just the fact that he goes out there and I, I mean, that's still fun. Not, I don't care if he's not there. It's still cool. God. And also, I always will end talking about this with this. Give me that Luke on crate Black Series figure because that's one of the coolest yes. Luke looks. Oh, Say that amazing. five times fast that we have not really got. That has not gotten much love. Dude, and I will us. say, I want to say one thing about that scene. There's very few scenes when you see a Star Wars that truly shock you. I can talk about a couple. But whenever Luke was not there, yes, and he that whenever he had the lightsaber go through him and he didn't get cut in half, and Luke turns around and he's there levitating on the rock on Octo, that honestly yes. was one of the few times in the sequel trilogy where I was just completely shot. I was like, What he can yeah. force project? Oh, yeah, brilliant, brilliant, and it shows that that you can be more powerful. You can be more powerful. You don't have to desire you, power, but if you sit well, you yourself, don't have to. You don't have to choose violence, and you can yes. still make a stand. Yes, and he literally completely defenseless. Their blades never crossed. It was just, but that was, was still, perfect. I think, a better, a better. I, I think that's my favorite duel, lightsaber yes. duel. Yes, in the sequel trilogy, the lack honestly. of duel. Oh, it's so good. It's, I mean, it's well, it's very uh, Obi Wan and Maul in the desert in Rebels. Yes. It's yes. very samurai. It's oh. it's magical space samurai, and I'm. You don't have to like it, but I love it. So, dude, and when whenever he says "see you around, kid," and then he screams, "Now!" It's like so Anakin parallels. It's just oh, crazy. and Rick is it right. Was everything, the whole speech though, where he's like, "The rebellion is reborn today." Um, uh, was it the war is just beginning, and, and I will not be the last Jedi. Last Jedi, and it cuts to Ray. <sighs> So which I know is like oh oh it's like the the it's like the uh, uh Leonardo DiCaprio from uh, uh Hollywood yes uh, once by time in Hollywood like oh, uh, oh there's the there's the name <laughs> of the movie but but just the way he gives that speech like every amazing every word you just said was wrong, wrong. oh man um, well anyway. that was great that was a great discussion it. Jerry real quick if you can before we end this show it what's going on <laughs> what is going on with hyperfocus on Monday who we got on what's going on uh, this Monday on Hyperfocus, we have Brian from Pink Milk coming on. Actually, oh, cool. and I don't know what we're talking about yet, but but Brian is a that, that's going to be a new. Yeah, there I am drinking drinking coffee or something. There we every are, Monday. looking all astute. Um, every Monday, Hyperfocus, eight p.m. Eastern, uh, seven Central, whatever. Just find your time zone and Google it, kids. Yeah. Um, but I, I honestly, I'm gonna. Ask, I think I'm actually gonna start asking people if they have a topic they want to talk about. But I also kind of like the free formness of just sure, let's find it as we go, as long as yeah. we you know have something to talk about. Yes. But uh yeah, come and see, come to see the show if you want to find out what we're gonna talk about. Hell yeah, dude. I love it. I I tuned in last time. I had a blast watching your show. It was brilliant. It Fantastic. Really was brilliant. What about um, Bombad Gaming? What are you gonna be doing in Bombad Gaming next week? Wednesday, Bombad Gaming. I'm gonna put a poll out there on all my social medias. I'm talking uh, Instagram, Twitter, and I think Facebook might even do polls now. And it's going to have three options. And I think those three options, Jerry, because you can determine the next game I play. I think it's a fun okay. idea of doing that for these first couple episodes. I'm thinking Mario 64, Sonic Mania, or maybe even a Star Wars game. I don't know the Star Wars game yeah. yet. But Guys, that's the magic I, of Bombad. It doesn't have yes. to be Star Wars. It doesn't have to be Star Wars. It's great. And I'm a big it's, – it's, and also I will say it is Sonic's – 30th anniversary. Uh, and it's the happy it's anniversary, the Sonic. It's the N64's 25th anniversary, and it's Pokemon's 25th anniversary. So let's let the audience decide. I had a blast last Wednesday, and Jerry, how about I see you next Wednesday? How about I see you next? You I'm sorry, next Thursday 
talking about the other 25 on our list. We can talk good? about the other 25 on our list. So I'm sorry you reminded me. Have you seen have has anyone ever seen the the Pokemon creative meetings uh before launch on t- on TikTok? No. I'm we not. might have to we might have to get those on here. Troy, <laughs> if Troy hasn't seen them, they're hysterical. Okay. Um, so anyway, it was just look look those up and forget the guy's name. But if you haven't seen Pokemon Create, I think it's Creative Meetings. Um, it's them trying to come up with 150. Oh, that's great! And it's the same guy playing three characters. It's incredible. Anyway, hey, um, Jerry, we have a sponsored message from Doctor Joe. Should we should we show oh, that? Sure, mom and dad, this is a good time to bow out. Love you guys. Anyways, my broskies, I gotta bounce. Bounce on your boy's dick. Hey, got him. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Joe, for the kind words. Jerry, what? This man is not a real doctor. We do not recommend you take any of his advice. <laughs> Your boys. I. Right. Your boy. Jerry, what should the people do until next Thursday or Monday or Wednesday? I don't care when you show up. Well, whenever you join us, whenever, whatever time you find yourself in life, I don't know. I don't know why I'm getting so existential. Wherever you find yourself in life, you should stay bombed. Stay bomb bad. Peace. All concerns will be treated with the utmost respect. Not. You shall all come back.